Imagine you talk to a native speaker and a native speaker says, Hey, how are you doing? What do you say? Well, that's pretty easy. You can say, I'm doing well, thank you. But what if that native speaker tells you this? FM, man got bare vex the other day in a chicken and chip shop, you know, because man asked for two wings and chips for a pound. But boss man only gave man one wing, blood. Is he mad? Okay, and what if he says this? So me look a pitney just run up in the shop and him say, Daddy, me want that and that and that and that. And me say, you can't have all that, boy. Money don't grow on trees, you know. Okay, cool, cool. I've been in these situations so many times. As you know, guys, I was born and raised in Russia and I only moved to the US when I was 25. But before that, I started traveling and I started interacting with native speakers and oh my God, that was quite challenging. So today I'm going to share my tactics that help me deal with native speakers that speak with a dialect or with a very specific accent. And I am going to share tips on surviving any English language conversation. So in the first part of this video, I'm going to focus on things you can do when you're in that conversation, the things that can help you survive the conversation that's happening, I don't know, today or tomorrow. In the second part of the video, I'm going to give you tips on surviving English language conversations that are going to happen to you later in the future, like in two months or three months. So please make sure you watch up to the very end. I'm going to tell you about a situation I experienced a couple weeks ago. I was hanging out at a playground with my kids and some guy just randomly came and he was like, high five for the little And I didn't get it because I wasn't focused on him. I wasn't actively listening to him. But what I noticed is that he wanted to give me a high five. He sounded pretty cheerful and it looked like he was going somewhere. So in that situation, it didn't really make sense to stop him and ask him to repeat something. I was like, okay, high five, whatever. And he just walked away. That's it. So your first step is assess your situation. Do you really need to know what they just said or it was just a random thing and it's never going to repeat and you're good without understanding what they just said? So if you're in a situation where you don't really care what they said, they were positive, they were fine, okay, whatever. Uh, so I get, you give them high five, you say thank you and you just continue with your life because not everything that happens around you needs your attention. But if something really needs your attention, if you're in a serious conversation, if you're trying to make friends, if you see that a person talking to you is worried about something, then of course you need to make sure you actually understand what's going on. So I want to introduce something called active listening. When you're actively listening to someone, you're not just trying to understand and comprehend what they say with their mouth. You also try to understand their nonverbal signs. They're using their gestures. They're using their intonation. You try to understand their body language. You look them in the eye. You stop thinking about your life. You start focusing on the conversation. This is number one step to understanding native speakers if you're in the conversation. Of course, we can talk about like practicing more when you're at home. We can talk about learning new vocabulary. But if you are right there in a situation where you try to talk to a native speaker, try to make this eye contact, try to be 100% in your conversation. And this is why a lot of native speakers tell me that the most stressful situation they've been in where they had to talk to a native speaker was when they had to talk to them on the phone because you don't see anything. You don't see their lip movements. So if you're interacting with a native speaker in real life, please use everything that the environment provides you with. If you're looking for a course that can help you interact in English more and overcome the language barrier, one of the courses that I can recommend is called From Intermediate to Advanced. It is a five week course where we focus on the topics that you need to become an advanced English language speaker. And the teachers on that course are Venia, who's a professional teacher, Angela, who's a professional teacher and also a native speaker. And I'm also there to keep you motivated, to make sure you're excited about learning English and to make sure that the process is enjoyable for you. You're not only gonna learn new aspects of grammar and vocabulary, you will also have access to a group chat where you'll be able to ask questions and interact with other students. And if you select the pro package, you will also jump on Zoom calls for speaking practice. The link will be down below and because you're watching this video, you're getting a special code. Thank you so much guys for learning English with Language Trip. The next tip is actually pure psychology. 
When we talk to a native speaker, for some reason, we really want to seem as if we're native speakers too, but we're not, and that's okay. Just during this conversation, let your perfectionism go. Stop overthinking everything you say and adopt these phrases. Could you please repeat that? I am sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you say it again? Be humble. Acknowledge that you're a non-native speaker. Acknowledge that it's hard for you to understand accents. Let the person know because the worst thing you can do, because a lot of people do that, and I did that, of course. When I was talking to someone and I wouldn't understand, and I would be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And sometimes my uh-huh just didn't make sense at all because they were talking about serious issues and I was just smiling and nodding. That looked super weird. It would have looked a lot less weird if I just asked them to repeat things. Also, a lot of people forget that they actually speak with a dialect. Like there are certain dialects that even native speakers would have trouble understanding. So if you raise that issue, if you ask them to speak a little slower, that would also help your communication. And the phrase that we adopt, could you please speak a little bit slower? Another thing, when you think they just said something really important, it's, it really makes sense to confirm your understanding. So for example, so what you're saying is, if I wanna get better in English, I have to read five books a month. Is that correct? So this method really helps you refine your conversation. You've heard something important, you say it in other words, and then the person confirms whether that's right or wrong. And now the last tip in my first part would be using a translation app. Yes, I see so many people these days just pull up their phone, ask native speaker to repeat. Okay, I'm sorry, can you repeat this? Native speaker repeats and you translate it into your own language. My mom lives in Thailand, she uses it all the time. Do that, nothing wrong with it. Again, I feel like that non-native speakers, and that's also true for me, have trouble interacting with native speakers on both language and psychological level. And so what we did now, we tried to reduce that psychological part. Now we're gonna focus on the first part, the language part. Now that requires more time to fix, more effort, I guess because psychologically, sometimes you just make a switch in your head, which could also be a harder task. Anyways, let's talk about things you can do long-term in order to survive English conversations. First of all, listen to accents. I'm gonna link to a video with that amazing guy who's able to mimic so many accents and dialects. Just listen to him. To see how diverse English language could be, it's also a very entertaining video. Second, if you're going to California, make sure you're familiar with the context. Like, okay, you come to California. I remember I was chatting with someone when I just arrived here and they were like, oh, let's do some grocery sh shopping. Oh, we're gonna go to this whole paycheck store. And I was like, okay, explain, I don't understand. He's like, oh, there's this grocery store called Whole Foods and we call it Whole Paycheck because it's so expensive. I was like, okay, that's, that's great to know. And then later on, I heard more people refer to Whole Foods as Whole Paycheck. So there are certain things in every single area that are only familiar to people who live in that area. And it really makes sense before you go there to start following an influencer who talks about lifestyle in that area. If you're going to California, watch uh, Emma Chamberlain. She used to make a lot of vlogs about California that I loved watching. Or Sonia Yesman, she's a fellow Russian speaker, but she lives in LA and she does vlogs. So find a creator in that area who you could follow to learn about life in that area from a normal person. Another thing that helped me interact with native speakers uh, is debating. So it's basically when you pick a topic, let's talk about the US. Try to separate yourself into two different human beings. Yeah, <laughs> such a practical advice, Marina. So try to divide yourself into two people <laughs> and debate with yourself. For me, that technique is not only helping me with my vocabulary, but also like it provokes emotion. I try to come up with arguments, I try to be more persuasive, something that really helps in a real life conversation. 
All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. I hope the next time you're in an English language conversation with a native speaker and you feel really bad about yourself, you're like, oh, Marina told me to, you know, stop pretending that I'm a native speaker too and uh, just, you know, drop the importance of being perfect and just talk. And I'm gonna do that. All right, thank you so much guys for watching up to the very end. I hope to see you soon on this channel. Please recommend it to all of your friends who are learning English and who struggle with using it in real life because they're afraid of being judged or they're just afraid to open their mouth in a different way because this, this is a different way we open our mouth when we speak English, right? It's retraining the whole system. Anyways, thank you so much and I hope to see you very soon on the channel. Bye-bye.